Hey there, I'm Paul King, one of the co-founders of Flow Mobile Surveying. And in this video, I'm going to give you a full walkthrough, a kitchen extract post clean report using the Flow Mobile Surveying app. So this report is designed for anyone who does kitchen extract cleaning and follows the TR19 standard. So we've built this report so that it should pass all of the TR19 checks as part of the Kitchen Grease Elite scheme. So before I start, I'll just explain there are two parts to the software. There's the dashboard, which you use for scheduling up jobs for the day and creating reports. That's what you can see here on the left hand side. And there's the mobile app, which you use for on-site data collection. This is what you're going to use for taking photographs while you're on site and recording your inspection findings. So let's dive right in and start by creating our first job. OK, so to create a job, tap the Create Job button here. Type in the name of your client. So I'll use my Acme Co client. Pop in a project. This is just your own internal ID for the job. So I'll just say Grease1. And now we pop in the address for the site. I'm just going to use my office address here. And you can see as I'm typing, it will start to look up the address on the map. You can also zoom in and adjust the map marker position if you like. So I actually know that our office is about here. Next thing to do is to pop this into what's called a pipeline. Now I'll explain more about this at the end, but this is just a series of steps that the job must go through to be considered complete. Don't worry about it too much for now. Next thing we want to do is pop in the site work date. So let's say the job is happening today and we need to assign it to some surveyors as well. So I'll assign this to myself my brother and let's say the due date is tomorrow by the time we expect to complete the report. Now as soon as I tap save you'll see that the job has automatically synced with the mobile app. We didn't have to press a sync button or anything like that. It was just automatically synced up a bit like magic. We didn't really have to do anything. Now this real-time data communication works both ways. Any changes made on the dashboard will be automatically reflected on the mobile app and vice versa. Any changes made on the mobile app will be instantly visible on the dashboard. Now that is of course assuming you have an internet connection. The app is designed to work offline. If the app then reconnects it will sync up automatically. So let's dive into the mobile app side of things and we'll start completing our survey. So first of all, we're going to create a new report by tapping the Add Report button here. And you can see I've actually got quite a few on this account, um, but this is the one that I'm interested in, the Kitchen Extract Post Clean Report. Now, first thing we want to do is to pop in some background information. This may very well be something that you do in the office before the job starts. So I'm going to give the report a title. It will come in handy later on may want to then describe the uh, building and the restaurant or whatever it is that you're cleaning. So maybe we'd say something like Chinese restaurant uh, don't work clean. OK, so then any of this inf other information is really just uh, optional, but you may want to put something in about the pre-agreed cleaning frequency with the client. Perhaps you've got an annual agreement with them or uh, six monthly or something like that, you can pop that into here. And also any scope of works uh, that you've agreed with the client to. So that's our background information done. Like I say, probably something you want to do in the office before you go to site. Now the next thing I want to do is to take a photo for my cover photo. So this would typically be a photo of the outside of the building. I'm just going to scroll down here and choose one from my gallery. Okay. So you can save that, and that's going to form the cover photo later on. Next, we go into the inspection section. This is where you're going to take the majority of your photographs and record your inspection findings during the clean. Now, depending on your process, you've got a couple of options here. You can add each inspection item individually using the Add Item button, or you can add multiple inspection items at once following the TR19 guidance using the add preset. I'll show you that in a second. We're going to start by adding the item individually. So let's add our first inspection item. First of all, we say where we are, the building, the level, and the location. And you can see we've pre-filled some of those locations just to make your life a little bit easier. 
Then you can pop in the pre-clean thickness uh, method. So we're going to use a wet film thickness test. And let's say this is 200 microns. Pop in your pre-clean photo. Again, I'll choose one from the gallery, but you would be using the camera at this point to take a photograph. So the first one I'm going to do is this one here. This is uh, the before photo for this bit of ductwork. And then we have this option, have you completed the clean? Now, if you're going around on your initial inspection and maybe the clean's happening later on, you may mark this as no, and then the cleaner can work through the list later on and mark these inspection items as cleaned. So let's do that. Let's imagine that we're doing the inspection, not the clean. So I'm going to mark this as no, just for the time being. Click Save. So that was our first inspection item added using the Add Item button here. Now we can continue the inspection by adding more items in the same way. But to save ourselves a bit of time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Swipe Right to Copy feature. And then we're going to cherry pick these same fields because it's the same building, same level. It's actually going to be a different location. It's the same pre-cleaned test method. And again, we haven't cleaned this particular part of ducting. So I'm going to click Continue. And what that's done is it's pulled through the information from that first item just to save us a bit of time when we're creating the second inspection record. So this time I'm going to select something different from the drop-down. It's going to be a fan this time. Uh, the thickness in this case will be 300 microns. And then we'll take another pre-clean photo again from our gallery. This time we're going to take a photograph of the fan. Again, we haven't completed the clean. We're going to do that later. And then I'm going to tap Save. So that was very rapid, as you can see. We've created two inspection items, and our cleaner can work their way through this list later on when they're on site with their cleaning team. Now, there is a second way to add inspection items, which is to add them in bulk using the Preset feature. So if I tap this Add Preset button here, what I can do is I can add multiple items based on the TO19 recommendations. In other words, the recommended cleaning spots within the TO19 guidance. So if I tap this button here, I'm prompted for a couple of fields. It's asking me which building we're in and which level. And as soon as I click Save, what you'll see is that seven items were created all at once. All of the ones that are marked in red here were instantly created. Now we can simply work our way through this list and fill in the missing information. So I'm going to go into this first record here. I'm just going to scroll down. This time we're doing a visual assessment. I'm going to say it was 400 microns observed before the clean. I'm going to pop a picture in here. Uh, sorry if my pictures are not the best. Uh, I'll just choose one here from my gallery. So. Um, it did mention the canopy, so let's choose this one here. And let's say we haven't yet completed the clean. So you can see as soon as we filled in the missing information, the red highlighting disappeared. This red highlighting is just telling us there's something to look at, something to check over. And then once the record is saved, the highlighting gets removed. So we would just work our way through this list, adding those various inspection photos as we go. Now I'm going to delete those other items that were created by the preset uh, because I don't want them getting in the way once we come to do our report. So we just swipe uh, to the left to delete those items. I'll just work my way through this list until we've got just the ones we care about. So the next stage of the site work is that your cleaning team you know, would go to site probably out of hours when the restaurant or uh, building is closed and they would then complete the clean. So they're going to work their way through this this list of inspection items where you've identified grease buildup within the system and they're going to clean these in turn and take some post clean photos. So what they would do is they would work their way through the list just clicking on each one, scroll down, maybe have a little look at that picture you took when you did your on-site inspection and they're going to mark this clean completed as yes. So we've, we're on site, we've done the clean now, and we're going to take some new measurements for the grease level after the clean. So I believe in the industry, you know, people will say something's never completely clean. Uh, they would say maybe 50 microns uh, 
because you know you can't get something completely clean so i think most of the time people put 50 maybe you do put zero uh that's up to you but um yeah this is the kind of thing i've observed before personally and the next thing to do would be to pop in the post clean photo so i've got a photograph here of my uh, canopy area which has been cleaned and i'm going to go ahead and save that item so as soon as i save that you'll see because we changed the clean completed from no to yes this little bit of text has reflected that new bit of information so it's telling us now that this area has been cleaned we can move on to the next one again i'm going to say that this clean has been completed it was a visual assessment and this time yeah let's just put it 50 microns again and we'll take a new post clean photo so this is the last one i'm going to do after this i'm going to head over to the report and we're going to take a little look at that okay so we've now got three inspection items uh, two of them have been cleaned and one of them hasn't this fan uh, let's say we just haven't got around to cleaning that yet so i'm going to pop back up to this section and i'm just going to scroll down a little bit to see if there's anything else we need to do um, I think most of this we can complete in the office. The only thing we might want to do is to add a floor plan or schematic sketch um, just from, you know, maybe a bit of paper. Sometimes people, they will sketch the schematic on a bit of paper and draw it up properly in the office. So let's do that. I'm going to scroll down. Hopefully I've got one here in my gallery. Uh, let's use this one. Not the best sketch, but let's imagine that that is a sketch of a lot of ductwork. Okay. Uh, finally, actually, we just need to put in the type. I'm going to put schematics for that. Great. So the last thing we now need to do on site is to mark off the inspection as done because you know, we did the inspection and the clean has also been complete. So you can mark off these stages as you go. Um, these are determined by the pipeline that we chose when we set up the job. I did mention it's a series of steps that the job must go through before the job is considered complete. So in this case, uh, this pipeline has four stages, inspection, clean, quality control, and issued, and you can mark each of those off as they're finished. So let's imagine now that the job has been complete, you're back in the office, and it's time to actually finish off the report. So in order to do that, you're gonna need to navigate to the job, uh, drill into the report, and you can see that the sections here are basically identical to what you had on the mobile app. So we can do anything really on the dashboard that we can do on the mobile app. You can make you know changes to the data. You can uh, do additional sort of filtering on the tables and things like that. So the first thing you'll see is we've got this TR19 checklist. This is just informational. It's just a reminder uh, to yourself, you know, that you've, you've taken inspection readings and cleaned all of these different areas of the system. Uh, it's not going to show anywhere on the report. So, you know, as I say, it's just a reminder to yourself to do those things. The presets will also keep you right because those are the seven items that were created when we use the preset. Next thing is to key in the TR19 recommended cleaning frequency. So if you are following the TR19 guidance, then you can include the TR19 recommendations on the report. Now, the cleaning frequency that you've agreed with your client might be different to the TR19 recommendations. So I don't know if you remember, but when we set up this report, we put in the pre-agreement cleaning frequency into this section here. This is what you've agreed with the client. The TR19 recommendations are based on the grease buildup and they may be a little bit different. So it could be that TR19 recommends a more frequent clean than what you've you know, agreed with the client. That's something that you probably have to speak to your client about if that shows some sort of discrepancy. So I'm going to include the TR19 recommendations. Now, we have the option to choose the TR19 method. You've either got the initial clean or predictive accumulation method. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put predictive accumulation. I'm going to set this to automatic and I'm going to put the last clean date as, let's say, three months ago or so, maybe four months. 
So click save and you'll see that that's been included on my report. Next thing is we need to put in some cleaning details. So we'll include the method that we've used. Let's say we've done hand cleaning and we're going to say that the system's been cleaned in its entirety. This is something that will be included on your reports if you send your reports to the Kitchen Grease Elite Scheme. Uh, this is something they're going to ask you for, so it's important to have on there. Now, at this point, I'm actually just going to go ahead and I'm going to view the report by selecting a layout here and tapping the View Report button. It's going to take a few seconds to load, and this is essentially going to be a preview of the report that we'll send to our clients. Now, the first thing you'll see is that cover page photo that we took is forming part of the cover page. And we've got some basic information about the job, you know, where it was, when it was cleaned. This is our internal reference and some light branding here, too. Now, if I scroll down, we'll see some information about the report and the job. And this was taken from, you know, when we set up the job. Uh, including those coordinates and that map position. Now this report is saying it's awaiting quality control and it's awaiting issue because we haven't yet marked those off as complete. Next we get to a table of contents. This is automatically generated based on the information we've put in. And we can click these view buttons to take us to the relevant sections. You see if I click this one, it's taken us straight to the cleaning detail section here. So just going back up to this section, you can see we've got some uh, basic summary totals of the system. So we've got a pre-clean average, which is the average, you know, of those three inspection items that we took. And then we've got a post-clean average as well. So it's also color coded these to show, you know, there's various risk levels before and after. Then we come on to the pre-agreement. This is the pre-agreement with your client which may be, as I say, different to the TR19 uh, cleaning frequencies, uh, which are shown below. If we hadn't checked that include TR19 recommendations checkbox, this section just wouldn't show on the report. So that might be good if you're not part of the TR19 program and you just want to you know, show your own client recommendations on there, but not these ones. Now, what you'll notice here is that we have some calculations and these are based on a predictive accumulation calculation method that we chose. Um, what we can do is you can actually click this button here and it's going to take you to the relevant tables which are shown in the TR19 and it's highlighted the relevant range. Now because the calculated grease buildup is in this range, it's saying we need to clean the system every two months. Okay, so let's go back up to the section of the report we were looking at. Next thing you'll notice is this cleaning details. This is, you know, when we said we cleaned the system uh, by hand and we did a full clean of the system. There are no remedial actions, but if there were, they would appear here right at the top of the report. So this might be something, you know, like install an access hatch or something like that. Maybe there's some work to be done before the clean can be actually you know, completed. Uh, that's the kind of thing you might want to put into there. Then we've got this inspection overview. This is going to group up those different items and show the before and after photos. It's just a thumbnail. Uh, we're gonna to get to the, the full sized images in a second, but this is a nice little summary of what we did on the site. If I click this view button, it's gonna take us to the relevant inspection item. So first of all, it's gonna show us the location we're in, whether we completed the clean, yes or no. And then we've got the pre and post clean photos here. It's also showing the pre and post clean grease levels uh, in microns here on the bottom. And again, that's color coded as you can see. Now we do scale down these images for the report just to keep the report small. If you click onto these images, it's going to show you the full resolution image and you can zoom right in and see some extra detail there if you want, which is really handy. So I'm going to scroll ahead just to the end of the report. And you can see we have this appendices, got some basic information about uh, this type of report that we're doing. This is all fully customizable. So if you want something a little bit different, let us know and we can change that for you. Now we've got some extracts of those tables from the TR19, just informational, just to give your client an idea of what they're looking at. Lastly, we've got the schematics here and you can see there's that sketch that we took. Uh, you're gonna have something a little bit more um, 
polished, I think, in the end, uh, depending on how you do your schematics. Although some people do just put a sketch in there. Okay, so there's just one more thing you want to do at this point, and that is to sign off the report. Let's head back over to uh, the dashboard. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to open up the QC and approval section. I'm going to put in a QC date. Let's do today. Let's say we also issued it today. And the expiry date is just really for um, the certificate if you choose to include it. So a lot of people, if they are doing the Kitchen Grease Elite Scheme, they'll actually send the certificates from Beska uh, rather than create their own and add that to the report. So there's two ways you could do it. If you keep this unchecked, you know, maybe you'll add the Beska certificate as an attachment. Um, if you want to generate your own certificate, perhaps if you're not part of that scheme, then you can create one in our system. But that's not, you know, an accredited certificate. It's just one that you're creating uh, for your client. So I'm going to show you both. I'm going to include my signature here, first of all. And let's just save this and head to the start you'll see we previously had a few messages here saying you know the report is awaiting qc it's a waiting issue they've now disappeared and those warnings have also gone so uh, it's given us the date in which we've specified on the report now i mentioned about that certificate let's go back over and choose to include that i'm going to give it a title let's just say kitchen extract hygiene certificate and if I just scroll down my table of contents, you'll see we should now have a certificate right here at the end of our report. So this is the certificate that we've generated. It just has some light branding and it's basically got some information about what was done. And, you know, you probably have your name here as well and your signature. So if you do want to issue a certificate, that is a handy little thing to do. Now we can head back over to that pipeline. We can mark our QC stage as complete and we can mark off this issue as complete as well because we've done that too. So in that first part of the demo, I showed you how to schedule up a job for the day. We added a job in the dashboard and then I showed you how to collect some data on site using the mobile app. Uh, during that process, we added various pre-clean and post-clean photos of the system, you know, the canopy, various parts of the ductwork and so on. And then we came back over to the dashboard. We did some quality control checks of the report, just checked it over, made sure it was all right. And we then previewed the report itself. Now, the final thing to do is to actually download the report PDF. So I'm going to go back into the preview. I'm going to click this download PDF button here. So this takes a few seconds. It will generate a PDF on your computer, which you can then send to your client. So here we've created our PDF and you'll see we've made a few nice little changes. If I scroll down, you can see we have the headers and also the footer information here, which has the page number on. Now, all of those view options on the table of contents have changed to page numbers. So that's going to be great. If you print off the report, you can riffle through, find the relevant page. Um, but you can also click still on these different uh, pages and it's going to take you straight to that section so it's going to save you a bit of time if you've got a long report um one other thing i'd like to show you is that we've got the low resolution images on the report in other words we've scaled them down to make the report smaller but you can actually click through again like i said I showed you before and see the full resolution images even on the pdf which is really handy so that's the report side of things done uh, there's just one more thing I'd like to show you, and that is some of the job management features. So I'm going to head back up to the jobs list. And I'd just like to explain this view is going to show you all of your jobs that are in various states of incompletion. In other words, jobs where one or more stages are incomplete. So what we can do is we can filter this down further by selecting the pipeline. In other, in other words, the job type that we're interested in. And then we can use these filter drop downs here to filter things even further. So let's say that as part of my work today, I'm only interested in the jobs that are waiting clean. If I select this option here, it's going to filter the jobs list even further. So this has shown me all jobs where the prior stage 
In other words, the inspection stage is complete, uh, but the clean is still yet to be done. The next thing I can do is to change this to jobs waiting QC. So this is jobs where the inspection and the clean have both been done, but they haven't yet been marked as done on the quality control stage. And finally, let's say, show me all jobs awaiting issued. And that's where, you know, they're just awaiting issue to the client. So that's very powerful. I'm just going to show you another thing, which is the search. Now, the search is extremely powerful if you are like me and you, you know, prone to typos and things like that. But this will actually search across multiple fields. So let's say I'm only interested in jobs for 11 Teapot Studios. I can type in that address into this field here and you can see it's filtering jobs for just that address now but we may want to filter things even further let's say I'm only interested in jobs for teapot studios for Paul King that's myself you can see it's now looking at both the address and also the assigned to users as well so it's searching across multiple fields this is great for typo correction too like I say if instead of T Teapot Studios, I was to make a typo there, you can see it's still picked up these jobs. So it's very forgiving in that respect. So just to recap, in this demo, I showed you how to create a kitchen extract post clean report that follows the TR19 standards and guidance. I showed you how to schedule up a job for the day. I showed you how to collect some data on site using the mobile app taking some photographs of your work and then finally we went back to the dashboard we did some basic quality control checks and we printed off the finished report to send to our client so in this example we used the predictive accumulation method to show the tr19 recommendations uh, but you can also like i say use the initial clean method as well now this should be a great template for anyone who carries out kitchen extract cleans and follows the TR19 standard. We can customize the report however you like though. So if you follow a different standard or you have a different way of working, then let us know and we can easily customize the report to your way of working. I hope you enjoyed this demo. Please get in touch if you want to find out more.